it's Wednesday and it is a beautiful, glorious, sunny day. Yes. Fraser, the electrician, should be here any minute. He was here yesterday, did some prep work in the garage there. Uh, he'll have his apprentice with him. So hopefully with three of us here, we can get cracking, get those remaining hooks in, get the rails up and get the panels up. So that's the goal for the end of the day. Get the panels up in the roof, get them wired in down to the PV combiner box and maybe start doing a bit of work to sort out the mess I made last night in the garage with the multi pluses and the Lynx distributor. it at one point they seem to be going quite slowly this morning getting these brackets in and there's still a question mark about how waterproof it is time will tell but we got there in the end we've got the nine panels up on the roof they're all made off they're all connected down in the pv combiner box all connected together the last thing to do up in the roof is to get the bird protection in to keep the wonderful little pigeons out this is a mesh kit from EnviroGuard. Enviro, EnviroGuard. So I did look at a few other options. These mesh kits are all mostly the same. This one was reasonably priced and had reasonable delivery price as well. And there's radio crap from the trees sitting on here. The instructions for this have it all on here bent a little bit at the bottom and then recommend cut it along the line of the panel once it's up but that looks like a pain you're never going to get that neat this looks like it's about the right height to go all the way along so I think what I'm going to do is pre-cut strips this size a bit longer than this probably and use that so you end up with a nice neat finish sit and suffer through me fitting all of this it's just fiddly pain in the ass and um, it it seems to be fine cut it down to size I think this is quite a neat solution I don't like when it's folded it seems lazy uh, I don't think there's any practical reason for it so I think I'm going to do this it's not too painful uh, I've done that little bit in what five minutes ten minutes maybe so try and get all the way down at the end this evening maybe up the side there, get this finished tomorrow morning and get the scaffold down, ready to be collected. Solar panels were installed a few days ago. I am still out in the garage plodding along trying to fix up everything that I dismantled to try and tidy this lot up. Fraser the electrician connected up the PV combiner box and installed the charge controller. So 
I've now got power, solar power, flowing to the charge controller. And I've been able to connect to that with Victron Connect, the, the app from Victron that connects over Bluetooth. And I can see the voltage coming in. No current because you don't see any current. So there's actually current flowing out to the batteries, for example, or to the inverters. slowly getting somewhere. In my haste to see what the solar was producing, I've connected that up. Currently getting 271 watts, which is not very much, but it is exceptionally cloudy outside. So it has been almost two weeks now since the solar was put up on the roof, connected and been actually producing energy. And in those two weeks, it has been a bit of a mixed bag. When the sun doesn't shine, when it's a bit cloudy, a bit overcast, a bit disappointed with the amount of production I'm getting from the system. It makes sense, sun's not really there, you're not going to get much energy. I had hoped to get a little bit more than I'm getting. Sometimes if it's particularly cloudy, you're getting one, two, three, four hundred watts, something in that sort of region. So it's better than nothing, but it's not ideal. And in the two weeks since this system has been installed, the weather has been somewhere in between overcast and downright miserable. Most of the time, I haven't been producing a whole lot of energy. But on the odd occasion where the sun does shine in the middle of the day and the panels are bathed in glorious sunshine, I have been somewhat impressed. So there are nine 340 watt urinal panels up on the roof of the garage. In theory, those could produce 3060 watts. So I, going into this, was under the impression that the 340 watts per panel was not something you were likely to actually see. It's a figure that's derived from testing under lab conditions and is used as a way of being able to compare one panel to the next, but is not a realistic representation of what you're going to get from your solar system. I think maybe the sort of weather we're having where it's often cloudy, it's not particularly warm, it's 15, 16, 17 degrees, and the sun's mostly not there. When the sun does come out and blast the panels, that probably is ideal conditions. It probably is getting the maximum amount of sunlight onto panels that are not particularly warm. And I am seeing them produce well over three kilowatts of energy. 3,100 watts is not unusual for them. It's not the norm, Usually it sits around 2,800, 2,900, but I am seeing it blast up above that three kilowatt range. So I'm quite impressed with that. Whether that will continue into July and August when hopefully we'll get some sun, I don't know, we'll see. It's England, probably not, now that I've installed solar panels. So as I had expected going into this project, the roof of this garage is not the ideal location. It is shaded by the trees for a good portion of the morning. In fact, it's shaded probably through until about 12.30 at the moment. So that is not ideal. And kind of as I'd expected, I do not get a huge amount of production while the panels are shaded. I do think in the winter, when these trees are all empty, they've got no leaves, and the sun is sitting much lower down, so it is actually moving in between the trunks of the trees rather than the canopy, the panels will actually get more sun in the morning than they do in the summertime. So there is hope that in the winter I will get a little bit more production in the morning from these panels. And a key aspect of this system is to maximize winter production. I have a heat pump that is a, like a vampire for electricity. It consumes vast amounts of electricity to generate heat in the house. So I need to get as much solar energy production as I can 
in the winter months. That is notoriously difficult to do, so I need to massively oversize this system for summer. So as well as the nine urinary panels that are on the roof of the garage, I have nine perlite panels that are going to be ground mounted up at the back of the garden there. So that'll be another 3,800 watts. And I also have plans to mount panels on the roof of the house. Those will be AC tied instead of DC tied like this system. So as you've seen earlier in this video, this is not an entirely DIY installed system. I have done a good amount of the work myself, but I have had input and help from an electrician. Why have I done that? Well, there are two sides to this. First of all, all solar installs in the UK are supposed to be signed off by building control. In order to get something signed off by building control, there are a couple of ways you can do it. And for most electrical work, by far the easiest way is to get an electrician to do the work for you. They then provide you with a building control certificate saying that it's been signed off. The other option is to go to your council and go to their building control department and say, look, look what I've done. Please come and sign this off. And they may or may not entertain the idea of actually doing that. But one thing that is almost certainly guaranteed is they will charge you an absolute fortune for the pleasure. So it is almost always better to get this sort of stuff done by an electrician so that they can sign it off. So the other side of this is just a practical issue. Solar panels are big and unwieldy. They've got bigger over time. Even these 340 watt panels, which are not that large by today's standards, are not that small. They're like 1.6 meters long and over a meter wide. It just makes them awkward. They're not particularly heavy, but how are you going to get that up onto a scaffold by yourself? How are you going to get it up onto a roof, hold it in place, and then clamp it down by yourself? It's doable, but a hell of a lot more difficult than if you've got another pair of hands, or ideally, two extra pairs of hands to help you. So that is another good reason that you should probably get an electrician and somebody else to come and give you a hand with this. If you've got any questions about this system or anything I've included in the video, bang those in the comment section down below. I do read every single comment on my videos. If you like this, you want to see more from me, you want to see more from this system and how it expands and how it performs, a sub to the channel would be absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.